Sandy, you want to open this one up? Sandy, tell them what the video's about. Sandy. Okay, cool. All right, guys, well, if one LS Miata wasn't enough, you know, because two is better than one, right? There's another one. So, this is obviously not my car. If you guys remember, Ben here has been talking about building an LS Miata for quite a while, uh, but he's gone back and forth several times on what he wanted to do. So this is his old car. We pulled the motor out and we're planning on rebuilding it and doing a different turbo setup. And then he decided to do an LFX swap. Then he decided to do an LS swap and then went back and forth between those two about 17 times, probably more, honestly. Yeah, probably like 32. 32 times. <laughs> And then I was on Facebook and I happened upon this vehicle for sale, which is actually why I didn't go to Texas this month because Ben was on that weekend needed to go pick this car up. So here is what he got. Start with uh, under the hood, I guess. So it's got a beautiful refresh motor in here. Just needs one more head and then she'll be running. She'll be running. I mean, she's ready to rip. So anyway, they put this, uh, this engine in to mock everything up so you can see the subframe down there and stuff's got a nice big front sway bar, but yeah, so this is basically the test engine. You can see the trans there. So they cut the bell housing or the trans tunnel all like, way out on this car, which is why we're not going to be using this car. We changed our minds on that. It also came with this motor, but it's iron block and you can get away with that in like a 240 or something, but these Miatas are so light that like if you put another 80 pounds in the front, like you're really gonna throw off the balance. So he needs to get an aluminum block motor. So that is something we kind of have to track down and figure out. Um, we're not quite sure yet what route he's gonna go. He might go the same route as me with a L33, or he might go, um, you know, try to buy a vet to part out. Lift this thing up. Show you guys underneath it. So the car itself is uh, pretty clean. Like it's really not bad at all. Oh, it's got this really cool Trunk, what is this? Who makes this? I think it's an auto connection trunk. Auto connection. It's really cool. It's like a built in, it's got like a built in duck bill and it's like a full fiberglass trunk. And it's super light, so when you pop the trunk, it'll hit you in the face. Yep, been experienced <laughs> that one the hard way. <laughs> but th this car is cool because it's got a bunch of cool stuff. I'll show you guys the coolest treasure that we found underneath, which we initially thought was uh, trash. It turned out to be treasure. So I'll show you one second. So it's got. What what brand did you say sway bars were? I think it's just Mazda, like the competition Mazda. Oh, okay, well, that's cool. It's got Exita coilovers, which these are kind of like the most baller coilovers you can get for a Miata, which is pretty dope. I don't know, he hasn't decided if he's gonna drift on them yet or just get Probably some BCs. sell those and then just get BC. Yeah, <laughs> it makes the most sense because we can spec them out for drifting. Well, the these issue, would be spec for road yeah, racing. The issue is, is these probably won't work well with the drop knuckles. Oh, so low, yeah. The drop knuckles on it, it'll be way That's too low. true, that's true. Cause he's gonna, he's gonna go destroyer die. Well, he already has destroyer die rear drop knuckles like I have. He's gonna do the full destroyer die angle kit in the front. So anyway, CTS V diff 342 ratio. It's got the V8 road series mounting. You can see how it, it mounts to the ears of the diff and then it mounts where the stock diff would mount. It's basically two studs on each side. Mine mounts like how completely different. The, like braces just like Tommy. And yeah, <laughs> so, so Tommy and Rutnick didn't put these braces on here. So it goes from this stud to these two bolts and Rudnick stripped this stud out. During the YouTuber extravaganza, we brought down those pieces from a stock Miata for them to put on their car so they didn't break it again. So anyway, definitely something that we need to do on yeah, this. Yeah, I just thought that was interesting. So this was the big dilemma, the thing we thought was trash. So we're like, we, him seeing it, me seeing it in pictures, we're like, it's definitely a rebuilt T56. That's dope, right? So sick. Well then, I posted some pictures comparing the kits and we noticed this. Oh, this is where a external slave cylinder would bolt and then the clutch fork would go in here. So what that would mean is that this is an LT1 T56. So basically the LT1 T56 came on the LT1, which is a small block Chevy, basically, um, in the Camaros before the LS came out. And to, to adapt them to an LS, you've got to change the front plate, you got to change the the input shaft and a bunch of stuff. They're supposedly not as strong. I don't, I've heard mixed things on that. But anyway, that was like really, really lame to find out because we're like, oh, okay, so they just bolted on a T56 bell housing. Like none of this stuff's gonna work. We're gonna have to modify this. So then while Ben was gone, I uh, was worried about the drive shaft because it came with an aluminum drive shaft. So I threw the drive shaft up in here. It doesn't fit. So we're like, dang, like what freaking, 
where your housing is this, because the trans I have for the RX-7 is an LT1 T56 and it doesn't look anything like this. So then we looked it up, turns out it's a T56 Magnum. <laughs> so it's like the best thing it could be. It's like a pro-built transmission, like built stout, like 700 horsepower rated trans. And we didn't, we didn't even realize it. We thought it was bad. And it turns out it was better than we thought it was. So that's kind of exciting. But however, because the drive shaft doesn't fit, because the trans mount's gonna have to be modified anyway, I think we're gonna go CD09. So he parted out a Z. Um, he has a bunch of parts up for sale for it currently. Uh, but he kept the trans because we, we were debating on this, right? So if everything just bolted on, it would be worth it to keep that trans. But that's like a $2,500, $3,000 trans or more. I don't, I don't even know. So there's not really any point to do the same amount of work. We can do this CD09. It's going to shift good. It's going to be plenty strong and be a lot cheaper at the end. Yeah, for when I blow it up in the future. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's like one of those things. You know, if you break this trans, then you're out a lot of money. If you break one of those, it's super cheap. So, and he already has the bell housing and a bunch of the stuff that we need to adapt the CD09 to the LS. So that seems to be the good way to go there. So this is the engine that came with it. So this is a, like you said, a 5.3 iron block. They claim to be bored out to a 5.8. I think maybe they mean 5.7. Uh, basically the guy he got the car from, it was his son's car or? His son's car and then he had his, his other, his basically he gave it to his brother to build and then his brother who was building the car passed away and then the other guy didn't take the car back or whatever and it just sat at the other guy's house and then okay. his dad ended up moving there and selling all of his stuff. Got it. Got it. I never really quite understood that story. So his dad's not super mechanically inclined which is who Ben was getting the info from so we don't know for sure. Um, we might pop the heads off and we can measure the pistons and see what board it is. I mean it's definitely a 5348 block. Uh, you can see, it's, it, one thing I found interesting is they had a, this is called a bat wing pan on it. So this is a C5 Corvette pan. And these are really, really good pans for road racing. They hold oil really well and prevent it from sloshing around. If you guys have followed my build, you know that's why I went dry sump on my car because of oil starvation. So I, I would honestly be curious to put this thing in the subframe and see if it fits. Your main clearance issue is up here. You can see where kind of like the front of the motor going over the steering shaft is your tightest point of clearance. We can measure it. Yeah, let's measure it. It might. Like just but barely. Like it's literally 21 and 21. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so that's not going to work. Okay. Well, that's interesting. I was just thinking, man, that's like probably a good pan to run. I don't know why I have, no one's done that yet, but that would explain why it doesn't fit. It's, you can see why it's called the Batwing pan. It's super wide. So it came with the Flying Miata Moroso pan. So this is a good trapdoor pan. So basically my issue with my old pan is it was just cast in baffles to keep the oil in. This has little trap doors. So basically this door opens and the oil can come, let's say it drains up here, comes down into here. It can come into the sump, but can't go back out of the sump. So that's supposed to help with oil control, keeping the oil in the sump. But from what I understand, past like 0.8 to 1G in a corner, doesn't matter what you have in the pan, your oil is still going to slosh. Um, yeah, so anyway, the dilemma with that is whether or not this pan on and put an AccuSump in the car, which is basically a pressurized cylinder that fills the uh, engine with oil pressure if the oil pressure is dropped, or do what I did and go dry sump. So I really like my dry sump. Seems to be working really well for me. As you can see, see how my pan doesn't have a sump because it's a dry sump. So the oil is not stored in here, it's stored in a tank. It gets sucked out of these two ports through this pump here and then pumped back to the tank and then sucked back in, pumped out of here through my cooler, my filter, and then into the engine, through the engine, back out. Anyway, that's that's another dilemma that we we're trying to figure out what exactly he wants to do there. If he wants to spend the money and go dry sump or just go AccuSump or what. So it's got that pan and it's got these flying Miata V8 swap headers. So these are, I think they're a little better than what I have, which is a G8 cast iron manifold. Um, you know, they're actual at least individual runners and stuff. Um, they should be really easy to build an exhaust from. I think they're two and a half. So we'll have to weld like a V-band on and then we can make the rest of it. It's got this nice aluminum conversion drive shaft. It's got a, what are they called? Monster clutch? Yeah. Just monster? I think so. Yes, monster clutch. I've heard good things about these clutches. It has one of these. That's really cool. 
Um, so it's got, I mean, it's got so much of the stuff. That is the big thing about why he bought this car is just, it it's came with much so much stuff. Pieces. Yeah, yeah, it's all small stuff and chassis like stuff. radiator, fuel system. Yep. Like Not even really the full stuff. fuel system. You have some of that too. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we have a lot of stuff for it, basically, yeah, the, more or less. The only bummer is it's got an iron block. If it had an aluminum block, it Yeah, be we'd be set. I would be like, dude, let's get this motor yeah, in today. We'd be able to do it quick. Yeah, yeah. At least we have my car here, because my car is complete running and driving, like, finished car. Obviously, you know, car is never finished, but it's complete. And uh, we're able to kind of just look at it and see what we need, you know? We have a car to reference, which is really nice. We kind of did that with Steve's car when I was building this car. And uh, it's just easy to look at it and go, oh, like, you know, uh, coil packs or, oh, like plug wire, uh, heat shields and just little stuff you wouldn't think of if you were just thinking through it in your head that you see. So then the last dilemma, I think this is the last dilemma. Is it the last dilemma? So what chassis to build? So this chassis is decently clean. Um, I mean, the paint's good, but it's going to get repainted anyway, whichever car he decides to build. Blue. 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 That's interesting. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that's kind of irrelevant. It's basically body that matters. You know, so the rear, we got to take the diff out anyway to weld that up. The front's got to come out anyway to put the clutch on and put the trans and engine when we have an engine together and put that in. So basically the car has to come apart from where it is now. The car is just basically holding the parts that we need. Yes. <laughs> so, you know, so either way, car's got to come apart. So the problem is this car doesn't have a cage. And the trans tunnel is cut way out. We don't need to cut out that much, so we could save some time cutting less out, but it about even out because that's already cut out. It's just more work to put it back together. So this car, this is his old Turbo Miata. So it obviously looks like crap because we use it as a storage container right now. Uh, but, you know, this car already has a cage. So it's not his favorite cage. You know, he, he, would you, was it NASCAR bars that you would rather yeah, have? Yeah, pretty much rather have NASCAR bars and then like, typical how it runs down to the floor and then it's just like you have just nice welds everywhere yeah so so he has a few gripes with this cage once more or something more like mine where it's got nascar bars that come all the way out to the door skin basically it gives you more elbow room and then when people hit you um it doesn't destroy your door it kind of has some support there and then obviously the bar going all the way down as a main hoop instead of the plate thing because you can see this is a miata thing basically they weld up to here and then they put a plate here and then weld the door bar to here instead of yeah. welding both door bars to the main hoop. It's just like this was originally a roll bar and it got like converted over. So yeah. And harness bar. And oh, I didn't even notice that. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yeah, so it's just not the best cage, but in reality, um, at the end of the day for what we're doing, it doesn't really matter, you know, because neither of us, I mean, pro is the most the biggest thing we're going to run in these cars. We can't run Pro 2 because they're far too light. We can't run 18-inch wheels, um, and they have modified front subframes to have the LSs. So they're just not at all legal for Pro 2. And anything, I mean, unless he goes to some super strict Pro-Am, which I'm sure if he runs Pro-Am, it'll be in Texas with me, um, it, it's not going to matter, you know? The, the, those Pro-Ams will require, like, an FD-style cage, um, whereas this is a completely suitable welded-in cage. Moral of the story... Not the greatest cage ever, but not bad. It'll work. I mean, the, the bright side of it is I'll be able to keep power windows and all that yes, stuff. Yes, so yes. I won't yes. be like Taylor having to put, put my put windows, windows in, in or yes. remember to bring them. Or, yeah, you know. no, that that is a big thing. That is a big trade-off with the NASCAR bars. That is why I debated for a long time on my car whether I wanted to do it or not because it is nice to be able to just roll your windows up. I set it up to where I can just pop my windows in, so, like, I kind of get it, but, like, at the same time, if I'm out street driving or something, I'm not going to bring two windows with me in the back seat, you know? So it is definitely nicer to have windows that roll up, especially if you intend to street drive it or anything like that. And that, even at an event, just be able to roll them up instead of pull them out of the cabinet and put them in. So anyway, you know, it, it's it's a trade-off. So I think he's decided on yeah, the, building this car. Pretty much I'm on a budget. I'm poor, so I'm just going to stick with what I have and roll with it. <laughs> yes, I, I like the plan. It's caged. I have most of the pieces to do it. Let's just build the car instead of talking about it. Yes, we've been talking about it for far too That's long. Where I'm at. <laughs> I've been kicking him in the butt for a while, and finally we this, this car fell into his hands, and now we are much closer to getting it done. I mean, we're, obviously we're at step yeah. step zero, but still, I mean, this car's already got the overs on it. 
it's already, I mean, you already know it. You already know what's there. You can even run those seats for now if you want. You could definitely run those seats. You know, he has a lot of yeah. stuff. Like, you honestly have most of the stuff to put this whole car back together. Yeah, I could definitely like put it back together as a complete drift car. I just want to do like the front drop knuckles, like some yes. changes that way. And then like put the LS in it and let it rip. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, I, I really, no, I'm really hoping we can get this done quick. It's really gonna be kind of like a time frame of ordering things, you know, like it's always hard when you're building a car to suck it up and spend the money on a lot of stuff. So you end up buying things, you know, in little pieces. You're like, all right, I'm gonna buy this this week. And a couple weeks later you buy that. So aside from delays on waiting to buy stuff and order stuff, I think, I think we can get it knocked out pretty quick. Um, and there's a lot of stuff we can do right now. We already have the subframe. We have an engine to test fit. I have my heads that we can put on that engine, um, my old heads and my old block even. So basically what we can do is start getting the chassis ready, start cutting out the corners, getting the trans tunnel done, you know, getting the subframe in, getting the rear disc stuff sorted. So anyway, more of the story, there's a lot we can be doing. Yeah, we can pretty much put most of the car together without even buying stuff. Yeah. Like at least get it ready to go and yeah find a motor once we have the engine like we're pretty much there uh, horrible explanation yeah no you say. got it we got it <laughs> you know i i mean i dude i want this almost as bad as you do no i mean like i said dude it's just gonna be sick to like finally have two like nice miatas tandeming making smoke like ripping yeah like third gear Instead freaking my missile car like struggling and then your hot boy miata like eating my car yeah yeah exactly <laughs> It'll be cool too to to have two like uh, pro am level cars to practice together with. You know, like that'll be a lot of fun because we'll be practicing yeah. in like equal cars, both aggressive cars. You know, most of the time that I've practiced drifting, it's been like with you know missile Z's together and stuff. So we'll have like almost matching cars, but like real capable cars. So that I don't know. I'm just super excited because Miata drifting is not a very common thing. There's not a ton of people who drift Miatas. There's definitely not but a couple people that drift an LS Miata. So to have two LS Miatas kitted, tandeming together, like so sick. It makes me want to get a freaking two car gooseneck yes. open trailer for this thing so we can super stunt. Imagine, just envision it. I want I want to paint a picture for you guys. Uh, I'll just leave the hood open. Paint, paint in a picture, this thing. Lower it a little bit. Rear tires, not a foot from the fender well. Gooseneck trailer, two kitted Miatas with wheels and tires and everything ready, rolling down the highway. Can, did I paint a good enough picture? Was that vivid enough? Just imagine it, just imagine it. There is a really cheap two car trailer for sale right now too. Uh, it's a bumper pool, not a gooseneck, but I almost wanna buy it, but I already have two trailers <laughs> and I already don't know what I'm gonna do with my big trailer if I do move back to Orlando, so. Uh... Tell them not to move out, guys. <laughs> 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 oh god we're gonna spark Little it right he's trying to leave me i don't want to talk about it i don't want to talk. <laughs> tell ben that he needs to get his freaking car going so i can help him before i end up moving i'm gonna i'm dude, gonna the day i, I start moving out this I dude's got, gonna start working car on his car now, dude. we can start working on all right it all right car. all right i have a car all right well we're gonna get started so now you guys know our plan i just wanted to make this short little video to kind of tell you guys about this project get any input from you um, if any of you have a vet for sale, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, it would be one for part out. Um, what, what, do, is there anything we need that we can ask about? Any questions we have? Uh, I mean, we know most everything yeah, now from my sure car. I'm not the top of my head, but I'm sure we'll find we'll something. We'll come up with something, but yeah. anyway, yeah, let, let us know what you guys think of the project. We're going to try to hustle, try to keep us motivated. Comment below motivating things to motivate us like this video if Com you want us to be below motivated like seven threes with six oh front ends on 24s seven three power strokes seven yeah comment below <laughs> like the video if you guys like the video um yeah so anyway new project super excited v8 miata tandems are coming hopefully soon to a youtube channel near you so thanks for watching thanks for subscribing i'll see you guys next time goodbye <laughs>
is gnarly as hell. 